doodle budge. They were checking out this lovely Narwhal Nautilus pen. This was sent to me by Goldspot. This is a Goldspot exclusive. They teamed up with Starry Night Resins to bring you this gorgeous looking pen. This is called the Horsehead Nebula, or if you want to sound fancy, you could say Nebula. I've had this pen in my hand since about the middle of February. It's fitted with that double broad nib. It comes in a box like this. You just simply take off the sleeve, pop it open, take off the card here. It's got some instructions and details. It came in a little sleeve like so, upon which I immediately unsheathed it and started looking at all the beautiful sparkles and stuff like that. So really cool pen. This is my first Nautilus model. I have seen one and got to play with it at the uh, Vancouver Pen Club meeting. Someone had one and I was always curious about it. I like the little porthole they have so you can see the ink level. If you can see mine, it's all shimmery. I thought I should get a shimmery sparkly ink to sort of go with the pen. So I chose uh, these random shimmer inks I got off of AliExpress. I did a little review on these a while ago, but it's got a gold shimmer in there. So I thought this would be a good candidate. It's been in here since I first got the pen. So like three, three weeks, almost four weeks, it is starting to clog up the feed now. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll show you that. I uh, I just primed it here so we could uh, get this thing going a little bit better. It's lately been starting to, uh, to hard start a bit. That's what happens when you leave a shimmer ink and a pen for quite some time. But I had to go with shimmer for this. So I'm going to write with it, tell you all about it, size compare and all, all that stuff. I'm also going to take it apart and clean it because I got to do that. So if you're curious about how you uh, clean out one of these bad boys, stay tuned. Let's give you a quick go around of the pen so you can get some close ups and details. Simple uh, sort of button type shape here at the end of the pen. Matches all the trim here, so it's gold plated trim. Simple uh, Narwhal Nautilus clip. This is what they have in all their Nautilus pens. It's firm, but not overly firm. Nice little spring action to it, so I like that. Here you can see the cap band that goes all the way around. Got some nice detail on there. Now I noticed on here this has the old spelling. They've switched uh, names. It was a little while ago now, but it's got the old narwhal. The new one, you say that it's it's spelt different, but you pronounce it the same. And here's a close up. I think this is one of the coolest features with this pen. This is why really I wanted to get one of these. I've been thinking about this for quite some time. It's just a unique ink window. I think the overall shape of the pen and these little uh, sort of porthole ink windows. It reminds me of one of those old sort of diving bell suits. It just looks really, really slick. I, I like the overall design of this pen. Piston filler, I'll work the knob here. Will it measure ink capacity? I haven't done that yet, so we'll do that when I clean it out. And you can just see all that beautiful shimmer and shine. Now, if this type of pattern isn't for you, some people just don't like these types, check out some of the other uh, Nautilus pens. They're really cool looking. Two turns is what it takes to pop off the cap. Fitted with a stainless steel nib, gold plated. Uh, Narwhal makes their own nibs, so in house nibs will get you. Whoop, dropped it there, but here's a quick little close up of the nib. You see, you got the uh, Narwhal spiking into the water there, looks pretty cool. Super comfy section. I don't think anyone would be offended by that section, no matter how you grip your pen. There's a teeny little step here, but that's not going to bother anyone. The threads are nice and smooth and easy going. So if you're a high gripper, low gripper, you know, however you grip your pen, weird grip, strange grip, whatever it is, it's going to be pretty darn comfortable. It doesn't post. Okay. It doesn't post, but I have a pretty huge hand and this is comfortable for me. If you are a must poster for your pens, well, this isn't going to work for you. And here's a lovely glittery close up of the uh, standard ABS feed here on the bottom. Since they are all ready to go, let's do the quick size comparison. So here we have a Lamy 2000 and Estabrook SD, obviously the Narwhal, Mont Blanc 149, and this is the Asvine V126. So decent size, it's the longest of the bunch, even a touch longer than 149. Let's pop off the caps. Caps off again, you can see it's pretty much neck and neck with the 149, maybe just a hair longer. And uh, let's find out. Let's give you exact dimensions. Now, Gold Spot was so kind to provide me with exact dimensions, but uh, I got to measure it myself. So we have 150 and a quarter like so, and about 132 and a quarter like that. Cap diameter, body diameter, top of the section on the threads, narrows down to about 10 and a half right before the little shoulder at the end, and the section length that's decent, top of the threads there, again, just over 26 millimeters. How much does the pen mass? Let's see. 32 and a quarter, let's say, pop off the cap. We got 13 and three quarters, so that's going to be what, 18 and something, 18.4 in the body, and that is with a decent amount of ink in the pen. 
However, before I unink the pen, I need the ink inside here to do the writing sample, so let's do that. Writing with the pen is quite enjoyable. The weight is nice. It's quite comfortable in the hand, the balance, everything, the grip, the section, of course, the nib. And in the world of fountain pens, you can say that you just love the feel of a juicy wet rod and everyone knows what you're talking about. No one's offended. Uh, the shimmer doesn't quite show up amazing on this paper. This is just uh, some Claire Fontaine. So you see a teeny little bit of sparkle here and there. I decided to get out the regalia and do the same thing. So you can see it's got a little bit, little bit of that gold shimmer fleck to it. Kind of a fun ink anyways. Now, this ink has been in here for quite some time. Uh, <laughs> so it is due for cleaning. So what I'm going to do is clean out the pen. I'll show you how to disassemble it and stuff if you need to service the pen. And then we'll check the ink volume. All I did so far is I just went to the sink and just ran the piston up and down a few times just to empty out the existing ink. You can see in here through the little window, we got lots of glitter <laughs> stuck on there. So I wasn't planning to remove the piston assembly, but I might just have to do that. Now, under normal conditions, if you want to get access, again, I don't recommend taking a pen fully apart unless you really, really, really need to. Um, so what you can do, you can unscrew the nib unit. So you just do it like that. The other thing you can do as well is you could just pull out the nib and the feed from the nib housing. And so you can see we got some glitter all up in there. I'm probably gonna break out my ultrasonic cleaner here really quick. There's no way I'm gonna be okay putting that back in here. I think what I'll do now, I'll just like flush this out. I can most likely get that glitter all out of there. I found this wrench here in my drawer, so I might as well use it. It's actually one of the ones from my Asfine pens. So I'm just gonna unscrew the assembly because we did get a lot of glitter in there. I took one for the team here for the review, but I had to do it because we gotta have sparkly glitter bits if we're gonna have a sparkly glittery pen. So now you can see what the inside looks like. Yeah, there's lots of goo in here. So if you are gonna do it, just leave the piston assembly like so. It's not that hard to get it back in there, but some people get a little confused of where the position should be of the knob and the piston and all that stuff. So if you do have to take it apart like this, just leave it like that, wipe it off, clean it off, put a little dab of grease, I'll show that in a moment and then just put it back in and everything will be in the right position. I finished cleaning the pen. It took a little extra effort, especially to get all that glitter out of the feed. If you have uh, an eyebrow brush, my wife gave me a couple of these. I find they work really well to get stuff out of the feeds. Worked pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with how clean it is. We're gonna reassemble. I got the piston all ready to go on the wrench. I'm gonna put just a little dab of silicone grease on there. If you have a Twisby Eco Pen, that tiny little bottle they have of grease that will be perfect on here. We're just going to slide it all in there. I didn't adjust any of the uh, the piston knob or anything at all like that just to make it simple. It's an opposite thread, so we're going to tighten it down that way. I like to turn the pen body just so you don't uh, you know over torque things. It's just a delicate resin and just a final little mini snug. Run that piston a couple times just to lubricate everything and it's nice and smooth, ready to go. Reinstall the housing with the nib and feed, and we are done. While I'm at it, uh, please observe, there's a couple little O-rings on here. I'm probably gonna add just a dab of grease on those as well. The empty pen body, we got 17 and a quarter grams. Let's hit the tear button. And now I'm just gonna substitute water it uh, to measure the volume. I'm gonna run the piston up and down a couple times, get rid of all the air bubbles, fill it all the way up, and let's see how much ink this holds. All right, let's have a look. We got, let's call it 1.7 milliliters of ink capacity. So big thanks to Gold Spot Pens for sending me this new model, the Narwhal Nautilus 
Horsehead Nebula. The Horsehead Nebula is a pretty popular celestial object that's photographed. It's quite beautiful as well. Nebulas are really interesting, sort of the nursery, the birthplace of stars. Uh, they also come from stars that go supernova, so it's pretty interesting. And a fun fact, so the Horsehead Nebula, check it out because there's new images done by the James Webb Space Telescope. What's interesting is that one operates in infrared. Now to do all the dust and sort of clouds that are associated with nebula, it can be tough to see, but if you look at it in infrared, you can see a bunch of stuff you couldn't see before. So there's some new images of the Horsehead Nebula. You can compare some between say Hubble and the, the James Webb, you can see some new details. So that's sort of a neat thing. This would be a good pen for uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's kind of into space stuff. So anyways, we'll leave it there. If you're gonna be clicking around, check out the description and the like and the comments and subscribe because if you do, we'll catch you next time.